this is Debbie West and I'm really excited to be with you today coming at you from the Art Center of Coastal Carolina through our TAP program. Our TAP program is the Teaching Art Reach program and it's where we get to bring you wonderful lessons of art, art history that's integrated with the subject matter. Today we're excited to bring you the beautiful collages and the beautiful art of Romare Bearden. So before we get started, I want to make sure that you've got everything you need. So you'll notice in the link that there's a handout that you can download. And this handout is going to have every bit of information that you're going to need to be able to do this lesson. Okay? You can watch the video and you can stop it at any time. Go into your packet and read up and see some of the photos on how to do this as well. So we want to make sure that we're setting you up to be a successful artist. So before we move on into the actual artwork, there's some information that I'd like to give you all about this artist from Air Bearden that again is in your packet, but I think it would be fun if we kind of dove in together to learn a little bit about him. He's an amazing, amazing artist. I think you're going to love his story. So let's think here. Let's go to this first page. Romare Bearden was born on September 2nd in 1911 and he passed away on March 12th in 1988. And one of my favorite quotes that he says is that you don't paint what you see, you paint what you feel. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. So he was born in Charlotte, North Carolina. So not too far from here, right? Um, a couple hours away. And his friends all called him Rami. His name is Romare and they called him Rami. Uh, like many African-American families though that were living in North Carolina um, and in the South, they were wanting to migrate or to move up into the North. And the reason for that was because of racism and because they were having a hard time finding jobs. So they wanted to work in the industrial industry in the North. So part of this series that we're doing is some social studies work where you can learn and talk about the Great Migration. During that time, six million African Americans moved from the South up to the north. They moved up there so that they could have a better way of life, right? They could um, escape racism, they could find better jobs for their families. So it was a very interesting time in the world. So um, Bearden actually ended up moving um, up to New York with his family in 1914. Okay, so he was just pretty much a young boy. He grew up then in Pitt Pittsburgh and then in New York City. Um, he actually graduated from U NYU, the New York University, which is an amazing school. And he was then a social worker for years, so he found that he was really only able to make art a little bit on the side. But it was what was fueling him, right? He felt like he just needed to create and make his art. So he ended up going back to school to Columbia University, and there is when he really started studying full-time art. He became an amazing artist, and actually his first works that he did were very realistic. He did a lot of paintings, a lot of drawings, and then he started to do this really cool thing that's called collage. Collage is where you're cutting out photographs and you're gluing parts of the photographs together to create new imagery or new visual stories, right? Kind of really, really, really exciting work and very new in this kind of era. Um, a lot of artists were just painting and drawing still, but many of them were feeling like they needed to step outside of that box and begin to create using different media. So sometimes you can use fabric in your collages, you can use photographs, you can do some drawings and paintings in your collage. It's like a plethora of all things art. Um, so he's actually known as one of the most influential, most important African American artist in the 20th century because his artwork was about the migration. It was about this movement. It was about equality, right? And that's what these visual stories really showed, which is beautiful. He was also inspired a little bit by Cubism, which we talk about in one of our other TAP programs. So that might be something that you want to check out. Um, so it's very exciting to think about and look at the artwork that he did. So today what we want to do is we want to look at the artwork that he did that's primarily based on the idea of the migration. So we know that he was born in Charlotte, right? And Charlotte is where he was living on the land, on a farm. Um, you can see this artwork right here is all about family life and lots of blue sky, and trees, 
and the grass down here and it looks like everybody's just kind of very happy um, which they were but they were having a, a really hard time as well finding jobs so then they migrated to the city right they moved to New York City and here you see this collage it's hustle and bustle and it's busy it's a little bit like not as bright and vibrant not that to say that New York City is dirty but it's full of people so there's more pollution there's a little bit more smog in the air right um, there's just more people and cars and the industrial industry so the buildings are growing and there's you know smoke coming out of the buildings as the people are you know living in these buildings so you can see that there's a very distinct difference between this piece and this piece and so what we want to do today is we want to really talk a little bit about where you live what's your environment look like right some of you might live at the beach some of you might live in a neighborhood some of you might live more in a city right it just depends on where your family lives but I want you to pay attention and be aware of some of the elements where you live so that's what our collages are going to be about today is thinking about where you live and where your habitat is so before we move on and we go any further we're going to want to make sure that we've got all of the supplies that we need so if we're going to be an artist like Romare Bearden we know that we're going to need some magazines because we're going to be cutting out some imagery you can also grab some of your own photographs if mom and dad say it's okay that you cut them up right that's a big if um, I also want you to have a piece of paper that you're going to be gluing your collage images to so you can have white paper I actually have a piece of black paper here a large piece and then I've got some colored paper um, I actually brought two pieces of brown paper just decide if I wanted to go with more of like an urban feel or a city feel and then I bought a piece of green and blue paper which is more like the country and I might combine them because I've lived in both this city and the suburbs and now I live at the beach so I've got three different ideas in my head of where my piece might go okay we're also going to want to have scissors so we can cut out our images womp, 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 womp. we're going to want to have some glue either Elmer's glue or a glue stick um, I tend to prefer a glue stick with collaging because it doesn't cause as many bumps and lumps so I'll probably be using that and if you don't have any glue but you've got tape that works well too anything that's going to adhere the images back onto the paper never a bad idea to have a pencil if you want to sketch out some ideas um, I've also brought in just a couple more little pieces of kind of paper that I've already cut so that I can collage those on if I want to in the background and also some crayons and some markers just in case there's any negative space there that you want to go in and fill in and you can't find the right image so I'm gonna give you some time to go ahead and gather up all of your supplies and then we'll meet back here and we'll go ahead and get started with our collaging all right have fun on your supply hunt so welcome back I'm excited that you guys are back um, so here's what we're gonna do the first thing that we do when we start this lesson is we start looking through magazines and many of you guys probably have not looked through a magazine in a really long time because of this thing called the internet now if you want a picture of I don't know a tree you can go onto Google and you can type out tree and then you can print out a tree so that's all fine and dandy but you're missing out on what I like to call the aesthetic aha of looking through a magazine there's something really fabulous about looking through a magazine you see textures you see colors you see lines you see these these images appear that you might not have thought in your head that you might be using in your art you see people you see environments you see things that make you feel cold, you see things that make you feel hot, you see things that make you feel happy, and you see some things that make you feel not so happy, right? So as you're looking through the magazine, I want you to be thinking about what is it that I'm looking for? So right here, I just found a really yummy plate of food. So I just tore that out, right? I'm not even using my scissors yet. I just tore that out. And that's a really yummy plate of food. But today, we're gonna be making a collage about where we live. So I'm not sure if a plate of food is something that I necessarily need to have on my collage today, but I might want to hold on to this and just fold it up and move it over to the side. And this might be something that I want to create another collage on, another collage with for another day, right? So as I continue 
to look through here. I see some beach pictures. I see some really, really cool things. Now here, this is pretty fun. I see, I actually earmarked this page. I see a face, right? And when I look at Romare Bearden's faces, I realize he's doing something really, really cool here. He's actually taking images from other people. Let's see, here we go. This is a great one to look at. And he's combining these faces together to create a new person. So I might wanna create a portrait of me based on pictures that I find. So maybe I find a picture of a woman, two different eyes, a different mouth, maybe some different hair. And I might wanna collage those together because I'm creating art in the style of Romare. And I would put that on my piece of art to show that it is my environment. This is where I live. Okay, so I'm being inspired by him. And let's take a look at this piece too, by the way. Do you think this is done from the city when he was living in the city or is this done when he's living in Charlotte uh, on the land, on the farm? If you said the city, you'd be right. And think about some of the clues that we see that tell us that this is a city. We see some buildings here. We see a stoplight here. We see a lot of people down here. We see some brick walls down here and some windows. So this is a really cool piece, right? And this was done later to, to identify his life living in New York. Let's do that again real quick. What do you think of this one? Is this one the one that was maybe done when he was in North Carolina or New York? And if you just said North Carolina, ding, ding, you'd be correct. And how do we know that? Because there's more open space here, right? There's just one house, not many buildings. It looks like these two people are just having some quiet time looking out at the sunset, right? It's, it's just, it's calmer. It makes you breathe in and breathe out. Where the New York City one can be a little bit busier. In fact, let's do it one more time. Whoop, what about this one? Busy, busy, right? So we can tell by the amount of our, uh, images that are in here, but we can also tell because of the colors, right? And this final one, this could be a self-portrait of him when he was a farmer, and this is when he was living in North Carolina. Perhaps this is his dad, because he was pretty young when he was living there. So notice what we just did there. We were talking a little bit about the elements of art. I always love to talk about the elements of art and you've got a list of the elements in your packet because the elements of art are the building blocks of art. So we have line, we have shape, we have color, we have value, form, texture, and space. And when Romare Bearden was creating his art, he considered line and shape because all shapes start out as lines, right? A line closes and a shape appears. And as he's cutting out his pieces from the magazines or from his own photographs, he's considering the shape that he's cutting out. He's also very much considering color, isn't he? Look at the difference in the color palettes of the North Carolina rural pieces versus the New York City um, more urban pieces, right? So we have rural and we have urban here. Um, and then also space. Space is how you're filling in your composition. So it's never a bad thing to think about the elements of art as you're creating your art today. And we'll talk about that a little bit once we get started. So I'm gonna give you some time right now to go on a hunt. And this could maybe take 15 minutes, it might take you a couple hours. I'm not even kidding. Because depending on how many magazines you have, is how many images you're gonna end up having. And don't even think about getting out your scissors, friends. Remember, you're just gonna come in here, go through, you're gonna find something that you like. I love this piece right here. Let's see here. And you're just going to whoop, just tear it out, just like so. And then put it over to the side for later. So go have fun with your search for your images and we'll meet back here as soon as you're done. I hope everybody had a great time searching for some images and now you should have a nice pile of images in front of you. I'm gonna share a couple that I have. Um, this is one that I found that looks pretty much like where I live now, where I've got, I'm at the beach, but I've got the city that's right down the street, or there's some electric wires here and there's cars on the street and there's sidewalks and streets and roads. So I like this image a lot, but there's something I'm noticing about this image. There's some writing on the side right here, and there's some writing down here. Well, if that writing doesn't have anything to do with my imagery, I'm gonna need to take my scissors and just trim that writing right off, okay? I don't need to have any writing on my art that doesn't 
actually fit with my story. So I'm gonna cut that off. I'm gonna put these scraps over to the side so I don't make too much of a mess. I also found these two doors. I thought those were kind of fun. And I was thinking about all the places that I've lived in my life, and it could be that you've only lived in one place. So that's one door to open. I've lived in several, so I thought it might be fun to have these two doors. Maybe I open one into my past city life when I was living in Philadelphia and then moving to Atlanta versus my life now where I'm living at the beach, right? So now what I wanna do is talk about how we're gonna cut because it's very important when you're collaging that you're cutting nice and neat, okay? So I'm going to take my scissors, and I always like to call my scissors my womp, 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 my alligator scissors, right? And they only like to eat right on the line, and they very much like it when I am concentrating on each cut that I make. Because if you rush through the cutting, your collage isn't gonna look very clean. Right? So this is almost like it's a drawing skill where we're wanting to draw and really take our time. And sometimes my kiddos like to go really fast with their cutting because they're so excited to get this kind of art puzzle put together. But then they're always sad when they do rush the cutting because their pieces don't look as good. So oftentimes they have to end up going back and cleaning up some of their cuts. So while you are cutting your pieces out, um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my pieces out and you don't need to watch me do that. See this, this is where I rip this really quickly. So I'm gonna trim that edge off. And this is a really big piece right here. I really like this tree in front, can you see that? Um, but again, it's got all these words up top here. And I certainly don't need those words on there because those words don't have anything to do with my story at all. So I wanna make sure that I'm going to cut those words off and put them over to the side. And then I'll end up using this piece maybe for a background piece, okay? Um, I also found a couple words because sometimes when you find words, um, that's kind of fun too. So all the places that I've lived, I've lived with my family, either my mom and dad and my sister or with my husband and my children. So I like the word together. So I cut out together, and I noticed that Romare Bearden really doesn't have a lot of words on his work, um, but I do like to have some text or a word or two on mine. So you can either have a word that kind of pulls your piece together or not have a word. See how I just cut that out nice and neatly? Okay, so you keep going, cutting out, and we'll meet back here in a few, and then we'll start to put them all together. Hey there. So I don't know about you guys, but I have a ton of images. I am so excited to start putting all this together. So right here, I've got some images for that portrait that I told you that I'm gonna add, but I'm gonna move that to the side and I wanna do my background and my environment first. So I need to decide, as we mentioned earlier, if I'm gonna use my brown papers here or if I'm gonna use my green and blue paper here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and use my green and blue paper here. I'm going to lay my green paper on top of my black paper like so, and like so. I'm gonna actually hold it vertical, and then I'm gonna glue my blue paper right on top. So it's gonna look like that. So now I've got a sky and I've got a ground, and this right here is my horizon line, right? The horizon line is where the sky and the ground meet. And you'll notice in all of Romare Bearden's pieces, he has a horizon line. Sometimes it's a lower line where the people are on the ground. Sometimes it's a middle line. And let's see, let's look back here at Mr. Farmer. Notice the horizon line is behind him, okay, behind there. So um, in all landscapes, you're going to end up having a horizon line. So I'm gonna take my glue stick, as I mentioned, I'm gonna stick with the glue stick today as opposed to the glue bottle, but whatever you decide to use is just fine. And we're going to glue the outside only. Guys, there's no reason to glue the inside. If you glue the outside, the inside's automatically glued down. So there's no reason to waste glue or to make a big glue mess. Uh, by the way, speaking of big glue messes, if you are using Elmer's glue, a dot of glue is a lot of glue. You don't need to squeeze it out and have a big puddle of glue. That's just gonna make your art very bumpy when it dries and very wet and could make a really big mess. So a dot of glue, repeat after me, 
is a lot of glue. Very good. All right, so I just glued my blue paper onto my green paper, and now I'm gonna go ahead and glue my green paper onto my black paper, guys. And I'm using a piece of 12 by 18 black paper, and I've decided I'm going to hold it vertically, which is up and down, versus for, um, horizontally, which is across. Okay, I'll show you that in a second here. Um, whenever you use a glue stick and you glue your edges, you are gonna wanna count to about, I don't know, 22 and push down just to make sure that your pieces are gonna actually stay put, all right? So this is vertical, this is horizontal, and I'm gonna make mine vertical today. It doesn't matter which way you do it. However you wanna do it, it's totally up to you. Um, so now I'm gonna take some of the pieces that I've cut out and I'm gonna begin to arrange them um, neatly on my paper. So I've got this piece right here, which is kind of interesting. It's um, it's, It looks like it's some land with some trees in the background. So I think that makes for a very nice background piece. Um, kind of talking about where I live now. But I also, I don't just live where there's trees. I also live in Hilton Head. So I live where there's a lot of water. So I'm gonna put the ocean right next to that. All right, so now I've got the ocean and the land right next to each other. Notice I'm not gluing down yet, okay? I glued down my background pages, but I'm not gluing my images yet because I might wanna play with them and change them around, all right? There's different ideas and different ways that you can tell your story. So if you start gluing right away, you might go, uh-oh, I don't want that piece there, I wanna move it. So just lay them down, see how it feels, be able to move them around, and then take a picture and then remove them. And if you like the first way better, then look at that picture and then put it all back together and then you can start to glue. This was just some really nice kind of textural. Um, I like the textures in here and the images. So I'm gonna lay that sort of right there just. And then I cut out this really cool house, right? Because I do love my house, my little house. So I'm gonna take this house and I'm gonna put it sort of over here on top of Mm, on top of my background there. But I'm gonna play with where I'm gonna want that to be exactly. I'm not sure it's exactly where it needs to be yet. I actually wanna move it this way. Ah, oh, there you go. See, I'm glad I didn't glue that down because I moved it a little further over and I like it even better. And then this piece is kind of interesting too. It's almost like it's an artwork of a landscape. Um, so I'm gonna put that in the background here. And I found a picture of some pears hanging from a tree. So I'm going to put that here, almost like it's hanging off of the trees that are in my negative space. And guess what else I did, guys? I did cut out a city because I'm not far from Savannah, but I miss my city life growing up in Philadelphia and then living in Atlanta for almost 30 years. So I'm a city girl at heart, so I feel like I have to have that city someplace on my artwork. Even though I don't live in the city now, it still makes my heart beat with happy. Right, so I'm gonna put that there. Um, something else I ended up cutting out. Anybody know what this is? It's the United States of America, right? This is our fabulous country. And I am very proud to be an American. And because this country is where I live, I thought it might be nice to have the symbol of the United States someplace in my artwork. So I'm gonna lay that down right there. And then I cut out this flower. Right? It's a nice big flower, so I'm probably gonna wanna put that someplace at the bottom, which is in the front, in the foreground. So I'm gonna place it over next to my front porch there. And this is actually coming together pretty nicely. I might take the two doors. Remember the two doors that I cut out? I might go ahead and take these two doors and begin to glue those down, figure out where I want those to go. And I'm gonna put one on one side, which is maybe you know my, my childhood, where I was. And then this one's gonna be like the door of today, where I am now. And then, one more thing, I kept the search going and checking out my friends. I found this really cool big door that almost has like this beautiful tree in the background. And I don't know if I can use it on here because it's really big and it might end up covering up a lot of this. But then I thought, what if I just glued a little bit of it right here and then I folded it like, actually, like this added a little bit of glue to this side and then glued it down so it's almost like it's the door that's opening. I don't glue the whole thing down, I only glue a little bit of it down so that you can 
um, open it up and see where my habitat is. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to keep that or not, but I thought it was kind of cool. I also found more words. I am chasing moments. Hmm. I think that's what maybe I feel like I'm doing right now as I'm figuring out this new stage. So I'll lay that somewhere and then I'm going to go ahead and decide if I like this way I have it. And if I do, I'm going to glue it all together and I'm going to be done with my collage. Wait a minute. Do, do you think I'm forgetting something? You know what? If you said that I'm forgetting something, you are correct because I did not finish my portrait. So I'm going to now move, I'm going to put the glue lid back on my glue, like so, and I'm going to move this over carefully, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take a look at the portrait that I've created, or I'm about to create. So I've got a face here, I've got some hair here, I've got three eyes, which I don't think I need three eyes, but I cut a couple different sizes of the eyes out to see which eye, can you all see that? would fit better. I think this eye is probably going to be a little bit too big. And then this was just a really cool textured background again. So now I'm going to, again, almost like I'm doing a puzzle, I'm going to play with putting these pieces. I'm not going to glue yet. I'm just going to lay them down and see what happens and how this ends up looking. And I think this is going to be pretty groovy and even groovier than anything, it's going to have a bit of a Romare beard and feel. So once I glue all these pieces together, I'll figure out where I want to lay them down on my final collage. And then you, there you go. We'll be finished with our portrait collage of our environment of where we live. So we've done some deep thinking about some of the elements and some of the things that we see in our environment as well as creating ourselves. So keep going, have fun, and I'll see you back here in a few. Hello and welcome back. I hope everybody had such an amazing time creating their final collage. You put all of your pieces together to create your own story. So like I mentioned earlier, I did go ahead and put the door on mine so it opens up and then I put the word together here because all these moves I've done with family. And pretty much the way that I was explaining it to you is how I ended up putting it together. I did move the United States from over here to over there. Um, but I've got my doors here, my flower, my city, my beach, and just some elements that show where I live and what I do. And then on the front of the door is where I ended up putting my kind of funky Romare Bearden like portrait, right? So I know that you had such a great time creating your collage. And the last part of this is where you can then take some marker or some crayon and you can come in and you can color some of these areas. Even if you had a little bit of paint, um, you could paint some of these areas in some of the negative space areas maybe around here. And another thing that I love to do is bringing in a little bit of literacy. So maybe you want to write down maybe some of the last addresses that you've had, your current address, what it is, um, maybe a poem about where you live, and then write that down or put it around the frame of your piece and write the words around the frame of your piece so that now this has even a little bit more meaning because it's not just you know, here's a collage. It's a collage that is a visual story, but now it has your written story on it as well. So I hope that you had a great time working with um, some Romare Bearden inspired collage work, creating your own collage and being the smartest artist because you absolutely are. So keep making art, keep making your marks and thank you so much for being here with us today.